So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chose the most auspicious time. But please understand, my dear devotees, from the point of view of astrology, from the point of view of every other consideration except pure bhakti, it was the most inauspicious time. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, from the beginning of the end of his pastimes, crashed through all sectarian, mundane, superficial boundaries. Just crashed them to pieces. He couldn't tolerate the conception of judging a person by their birth or by their race or by their educational qualifications or by their, by their wealth. He was looking only for the essence of bhakti. That's all that mattered. Yes, most astrologers would say, being born during eclipse, very inauspicious. But Nilambar Chakrabarti said, he's waiting for the topmost supreme auspicious moment. And it happened to be, by material standards, the most inauspicious moment. Tell me, parents here in Mumbai, how many of you are ready to get your children married during an eclipse? (laughs) Be honest. How many of you are willing to do a housewarming ceremony for your new house during the eclipse? How many of you are willing to cut the garland of your new business at the moment of a lunar eclipse. Nobody. Everyone's hiding during eclipses. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya was coming at the most auspicious moment possible. And materially, it was the most inauspicious moment. But he considered it the most auspicious because it was so inauspicious, everyone was chanting the holy names. <laughs> Because in this world, sometimes it takes a very inauspicious, difficult situation for people to turn to God. It's very lucky to suffer if in that suffering you turn to God. And it's very unlucky to be very healthy and happy and successful if you don't turn to God. It's inauspicious. So when the whole world in all directions was loudly chanting the holy names of the Lord, the supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, appeared within this world as the son of Mother Sachi, Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Ki. And when he appeared, Adoita Charya and Haridas Thakur, they felt such ecstasy in their hearts, but they didn't know why. They understood something very auspicious has happened. They understood deep, deep in their hearts that our prayer has been fulfilled. And little Nimai, he was so beautiful. Advaita Charya sent his own wife, Sita Thakurani, to bring gifts to offer the newborn child. And when she saw him, she understood that the same beautiful little cowherd boy, Gopal, has come again in a golden complexion. In the maternity ward near the bank of the Ganges, primary demigods from the heavenly worlds from the worlds of mystics and yogis. They all descended to this world and disguised themselves as ordinary human beings just to worship the son of Sachi Devi. Little baby. Vasu Ghosh, he prays. All the three worlds offer prayers unto the lotus feet of the son of Sachi. In Nilachala, he holds the conch shell, disc, club, and lotus flower, while in the town of Nadia, He holds a sannyasi staff and water pot. Lord Jagannath in Sri Purushottam Dham. He is worshipped by millions and millions and millions of people as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as the creator, maintainer, and annihilator of all the universes. But now that same Lord Jagannath, Vasudev Ghosh is praying, who is the proprietor of everything, he accepts the role of a sannyasi. Why? Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nadia when he was young, as a man, he was married to Vishnu Priya, who was Lakshmi herself, the goddess of fortune. He had a loving mother, so many hundreds and hundreds, thousands and thousands of followers who were bringing him so many beautiful gifts. The best life a person could have. He was in the association of the greatest devotees who loved him more than their very life. He was performing Nam Sankirtan practically day and night with those devotees, absorbed in ecstatic love. He was so loved. 
by millions of people in Navadweep and served by his mother and his wife, but he left it all to accept a danda and a begging pot. Why? For those envious people who were criticizing him and criticizing his devotees, he wanted to reach them to give them the greatest treasure of Krishna Prem. He was willing to go through great sacrifice. Srila Prabhupada tells us that this is perhaps the greatest sacrifice that was ever made. Some people take sannyas and leave a wife, but not like Vishnu Priya. She's the supreme goddess of fortune. Some people break the hearts of their mothers, but there's no mother like Sachi Devi. She was a widow. Her husband died. Her eldest son had already left home and taken sannyas, and she never heard from him again since. Nimai was all there was for her. Namo Mahabharanyaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gauratve Shenamaha Lord Chaitanya, the most munificent, the most merciful, he's willing to leave Navadweep down. Just as Krishna left Brindavan to go to kill demons, Lord Chaitanya left Navadweep to kill the demoniac mentality within the envious people. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on thesacredconnect.com.